Hickok 45. Is that a beautiful sight or what? Yeah, looks like some more revolver love, doesn't it? <laughs> oh boy, there they are. You see the title, the last 357 Magnum I'd ever sell. We've done this a few times now with various uh, types of firearms and I thought it'd be good to do it with 357 Magnums. Since I have a few, it's been a favorite since 1973 when I bought my first model 19 Smith & Wesson. And so, let's, uh, let's talk about it. All right, so I've got to decide among these, these beautiful firearms which one would be the last one I would let go. And I tell you what, I've had a hard time. I've been thinking about it for a few days, you know, making notes. And I, I'm not sure. I really am not sure. Hopefully as I work through these, I, I can kind of figure it out, okay? First of all, let me show you what we've got here. I'll point at each one and uh, you can go back if you want and rewind. So here's dad's old 357 Halls, okay? Made in West Germany, by the way. <laughs> and that's 357, got it from dad. That was one of his favorite uh, firearms, all right? And, and I'm going to eliminate that one because obviously, you know, that's so sentimental. It would be the last one I'd ever really sell. Okay, but I'm going to eliminate it for that reason. All right, so we all know that that would be the case. That's dad's gun, but I wanted to bring it out. It's 357 Magnum, very special 357 Magnum. All right, now, none of the rest of these have just a boatload of sentimental value, right? Yeah, none that I know <laughs> it comes to mind here. They're just all in that chambering. And of course, they all chamber 38 special as well if they're 357 Magnum. So what we have, uh, no particular order. This is a model, a uh, pre-model 28, okay? Like a model 27, big end frame. Haven't had it all that long. Okay, John had to sneeze there. So again, this is a model 28, a pre-model 28 actually, because it was made in 1954 before they started putting the model numbers on them. But it's a end frame, big frame, 357 of course, okay? You've seen that, that's a recent purchase actually, all right? And this one here is what is, that's my three inch, uh, that's a relatively newer one, I've had it, I've what, eight or nine years, I guess, but uh, 357, it's a model 686 plus, it holds seven rounds, okay? You've seen that one in videos, I hope. And moving on around the clock, counterclockwise, this one is the uh, K6 Kimber that we're all, I think, surprised uh, at how great a revolver it is, right? Then we have the Python, vintage 1981 that I picked up in, uh, I don't know, what, a year or two ago or three or four? Time flies, you're having fun? Yeah, an old Python, like the very first Python I ever owned back in the 70s, okay? And then moving on around, we've got a 686. I've not had all that long. Really nice one. Uh, forget the year on this. Was it 87? But that's a, that's a nice one, isn't it? That's a beauty. Yeah, I like that. And uh, then we have the Model 27, haven't had all that long. Vintage Model 27, made in the 70s. Beautiful, beautiful, in frame, heavy gun, just like a 44 mag, okay? And then we have the Ruger GP100, nice revolver. Had that a while, got that from uh, 10 Outdoors 9, I think, didn't I? So built like a tank, good old gun. Then moving on around the clock, we have my famous, Model 65, you know, I like that. The K-frame, I bobbed the hammer. What a beautiful job I did on that. <laughs> and uh, that's a wonderful shooter, a wonderful carry gun and shooter. And then moving into the middle here, we have the counterpart to that 65 that John got me for Christmas. This is a Model uh, 13 and basically the same as that Model 65. You know, it's a K-frame, three inch bull barrel. and. Uh, pretty blue really nice okay and this is the model 19 like the one i started out with in 73 except mine was a six inch barrel the first one this one's a four inch barrel but an old pin barrel model 19 357 magnum they're all 357 magnum right yeah so here's the problem the quandary i like all these guns a lot so with some videos like this we've done, I can sort of narrow it down just starting out. Now, now when I'm not out, leave that 1911 in the safe. I don't, you know, that doesn't need to be in the honorable mention category even or whatever. I really couldn't leave any of these in the safe. I'm sorry. 
and uh, so it's it's difficult. I sort of ranked them, and I I had trouble. I, I mean, I basically watered that up and threw it away. So part of the reason, part of the problem, <laughs> the challenge is it kind of depends on the purpose. You know, when you're saying, well, which three would you end up with? Which would be the top three, and all that sort of thing. I don't know. We talk about target shooting. We talk about a carry defensive, you know, handgun, uh, an all-around handgun for both the range for enjoying target shooting and possibly as a carry gun. You know, so it kind of depends. You know, this little K6 could even be a, a pocket gun. It has been for me. You know, so you know, it's it's a it's it's difficult. But I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'll I'll explain and qualify a little bit with with each one. But which one, if I had to choose today, might be different next month <laughs> that I would keep. If someone was going to drive up in 10 minutes, no, I'll take a longer than that one video. We'll say in 20 <laughs> minutes, and they were taking the rest of them away, okay? Uh, and all but one of them. Which one would I want to keep on the table? That's kind of what I'm trying to get to. All right, so if I can, let me start to eliminate the ones from yeah my very from my very favorites okay now i don't mean to offend anybody you know i love everybody and i don't want to offend anybody because you know everybody has their favorite models right in gun companies of course i'm partial to smith as you know and i'm going to prove it right now i like the ruger gp100 or i would not have bought it well-made gun solid you know even though it, it was owned by 10 Outdoors 9, and he probably taught it to shoot uh, crooked. Uh, uh, but it's a great gun, and shoots right on, uh, built well, nice fixed sights that are on. I mean, they're right on target. It's got a good double action and single action. It's a little big, uh, you know, like most Rugers are. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to put it over here. Uh, it's not in the top three, okay? I like it. I like it. But uh, I wouldn't own it if I didn't like it. All right, what else can I kind of eliminate? Well, believe it or not, I'm going to uh, put the Model 19 K-Frame over here as not being in the top, you know, two or three. I like it, obviously. I wouldn't own it. And some sentimental value, it was my first double action uh, revolver in my life in 1973 and my first 357 magnum it was a six inch as i said let get away so it's kind of neat to have one again uh, and i like it it could use a red ramp side or a painted front side and even a white outline rear sight like a lot of smiths have uh, a good gun but uh not necessarily my favorite Okay, there's so many good guns out there now. I'm a, so I gotta, I gotta eliminate something. I mean, they're coming with the truck to take some of these away. I've got to make decisions. <laughs> How do I do it? All right. <sighs> what do I eliminate? Okay, I'm gonna eliminate the uh, as great a gun as it is, the Smith and Wesson, the, the 686 plus. It's. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to find negatives with these now. Even guns that there's not a lot of negatives. I've got to find them. The negative of this, it's a new gun, newer got the key lock on it right and the frame mounted firing pin and you know, it's a newer smith and wesson i like the vintage i prefer the vintage smith and wessons although it didn't save the model 19 did it because it's pin barrel uh and even holds seven rounds great trigger you've seen videos with it i mean double action and single just a great gun uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna put it over there though all right all right i'm getting down here a little bit aren't i Okay. Well, you know, I just purchased this one recently, and I really like it. This Model 28, and, you know, it's got the extra screws. It's an old one made in the 50s. Gosh, the stag handles. You know, great, great old gun. Uh, it could use some white outline on the rear side as well. The finish is not beautiful. I like it because it's older. Uh, you know, I mean, there's really no good reason to eliminate it from the top, other than maybe some others just surpass it a little bit okay you know i like older firearms so i hate to do it but i'm gonna put it over there <laughs> for the truck when it comes to take all my 357s away all right now getting harder and harder 
I guess I'm gonna, if I was just left with one 357 Magnum, and I could have eliminated this one earlier, uh, just no particular order here. Uh, great gun, great carry gun, a pocket gun even. Uh, but if I just had one 357 Magnum, I guess I would consider it maybe a little small for just going out through the range and shooting and enjoying target shooting as well as maybe a, a defensive revolver. So a uh, great defensive revolver there, maybe maybe the best one on the table, don't know. I'm gonna eliminate it. Again, I got to eliminate them, I don't have a choice. Uh, it's not like I'm saying I don't like these firearms. Now it's really getting tough, really getting tough. We all know, I'm trying to get down to the top three. We all know there's nothing like a python, right? I mean, just the most gorgeous firearm it may be on the planet and in kind of an L-frame size like this one. It's just like the perfect mid-size. Ah. And then, of course, this beautiful Model 27. Yeah, 357, of course. Uh, Smith, this was made in the 70s. Uh, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful firearm. Uh, you know, almost as beautiful as the Python. Those two, probably, I think, the most beautiful uh, you know, 357 Magnums, maybe ever made, okay? And then the Model 60, 686, this older one, made in the 80s. Uh, you know, still got the older latch and everything and the hammer-mounted firing pin. I haven't had this all that long, the Magnum combat grips. This is a beautiful piece and a really, really functional one. Oh, man. And what am I certain is going to make the top three? I think the python has to. So can I shoot it? I mean, just looking at these things, it's just it's just killing me not to shoot them. <laughs> Let's shoot some of this. Uh, I got some, uh, what is this, some defensive, yeah, you know, federal personal defense ammo. Just got some of that, so I'm going to try that in the python. Okay, 357 Magnum. Let's just shoot this thing. Maybe that'll help me decide on the, the finalist. I'm having trouble even on the, the top three. So maybe shooting them will help. Good old python. How about a jug? Woo! Pretty stout stuff, yeah. Personal defense, got it. Yeah, that would defend my person against a cowboy or a gong. Yeah, got there pretty fast, didn't it? How about a bowling pin? Yeah. How about a ram? How about a click? Yeah, well, it was empty. So the python, oh man, just a nice, nice, maybe the nicest revolver around. Don't know. All right, trying to get a few sprinkles here. That's good. Oh, maybe that'll help me decide who is best uh, against the weather, the elements. All right, the Python has got to be in the top three, doesn't it? Whether I want to or not, got to be in the top three. What else is going to be in the top three? Okay, these two firearms are about the same, aren't they? And you know, this thing where I bobbed the hammer is such a great carry gun and uh, uh, just a real functional 357 Magnum. I've had that a long time, bought it new. And this one, the same gun, basically just not been uh, <laughs> destroyed you know, uh, any grinding uh, done on it by me. This is a beautiful blue, uh, you know, also made in the 80s, a Model 13 that is, uh, John got me. And it's the same gun. I did, it had beautiful grips with it. And uh, I've taken those off to, for combat use. This, these are the best. Let me shoot this. What do I want to shoot? Let me try some, uh, I don't know. Oh, that's a little 38 special. What the heck, something different, okay. Let me shoot it, remind myself how it feels, how it shoots. Because these little guns with the bull barrel are such a perfect, perfect size. There's a two liter right there. Oh yeah, there's another one. Oh yeah. Ooh. Yeah, hard to miss with. And basically all the same advantages of that one. And, uh, you know, I think, 
since John got me that, and it's my, one of my favorite configurations. You know, the FBI carried this for a while in the 80s, and the uh, DEA and FBI carried the stainless version too. It has some interesting history because it's just perfect. The sights are easy to see, yet durable, <laughs> non-adjustable, don't need to be, and, and just perfect K-frame size, three inch barrel gives you a little weight because it's a bull barrel. And I just like three inch barrels anyway. Just, that's gonna be a finalist. All right, we're getting close now. Which of these? Oh boy. I think, I think because this 686 is such a functional, big enough revolver, uh, I'm gonna eliminate the Model 27. A uh, beautiful gun. It, it ranks right there with the Python as far as I'm concerned, especially an old pin barrel one made in the 70s. But it does have a longer barrel. Uh, you know, I, the ramp sight on the 686 may be more practical all around. Uh, as far as a target gun to take to the range, uh, it doesn't get much better than that, you know, with the Python. I'm gonna let the Python, as far as a long barreled version, gun here i'm gonna let the python edge out the model 27 okay it's gonna just edge it out by a hair and that'll put it over there all right so now we're down to three and we've not shot this one yet so let's uh let's just use some uh federal uh th this is uh well american eagle 357 magnum what we shoot so much of this gun got the nice sights high vis there easy to see the red ramp uh, stainless, four inch barrel, really practical. It's an older one. It's very desirable. The grips are great. This firearm would do almost anything you really need a handgun to do. It could even be a carry gun. Okay, let's shoot with it. What do we want? Let's put one on this target. One, two. We've not done that yet. We've not even smoked any pot. Let's put two on the target. Boom. Double action. How about a little pot? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we get one on the gong. Got him. How about the cowboy? <laughs> Looks like the wind is just right on. Just a great all around 357. And, and that's of course part of my dilemma here. One of the problems and challenges, and it's a positive, the 357 is such a wonderful all-around cartridge you know many many people will tell you that of course just a perfect uh, great cartridge you can shoot really those are pretty stout or you can shoot 38 special you know got different kinds of that uh here's some i just got in let's I guess what's in it no 38 special 158 grain yeah there you go all the point yeah. so many choices and ammo that to carry with hunt whatever target shoot so that's part of it these are just such versatile firearms to begin with okay now here comes the really tough part now i would say usually i have a category for like three that were honorable mention i'm gonna put all those in the honorable mention this way they're out here okay i'm sorry overdid it i'm like the the coach that's given everybody a trophy i guess I, i'm sorry every single one of these firearms deserves a trophy and they don't deserve to be eliminated. Oh boy. So, the truck's on the way. It's just a couple of miles away. And I've got to decide which ones get carried off. Chuck Schumer's driving the truck, right? Well, well, it's not the situation. We just run him off. Uh, i got to decide. You know what? I, I think if I can just have one. Because uh, I'm thinking... For all purposes, I, I just got to think that way, I guess. Uh, something I can take to the range, you know, out the door to the range and shoot, enjoy it. And then and I can also, uh, you know, have it as a, def a practical defensive firearm as well. So I'm going to eliminate the python, I guess. I mean, wow, uh, you got to be crazy to do that, I guess. But as much as I like it, it's not a Colt versus Smith & Wesson thing. It's just, uh, it's a big old gun. And it's kind of a target gun. And these others serve as a target gun. All right. 
So right now you're probably thinking I'm insane, maybe. Well, yeah, right. Like you thought you've known that for a long time. So it comes down to a vintage 686 and one of my very favorite configurations, a three inch bull barrel K-frame. Oh boy, you know what I'm gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to shoot each one of them one more time before I can decide, all right? What ammo should I shoot? Let's just shoot some standard Magnum ammo. Uh, I wish you all could talk to me through the, your computer or your TV and give me some uh, advice here. And I'm sure you will in the comments, I hope. And which ones uh, I'm crazy for eliminating and which ones I'm, uh, I'm not so crazy for eliminating. I'll load them both and then I'll shoot them both. And I'm thinking now, I've eliminated a couple of wonderful just range guns, you know, several actually, but the Python, the Long Barrel 27, uh, that Model 28, the 4 inch 29. I've eliminated some really good range guns, but I, from experience, now I may not today or maybe I haven't, but I, I shoot three inch barrels and four inch barrels about as well as a five inch barrel or six inch barrel. So the length is not a big factor. And with these, I get a, a I get the added uh, practicality of them being smaller, being able to use in more situations if I want to. Because I do carry revolvers, you all know that. Well, let's shoot this uh, 686. It's a nice one, classic, great grips too. Oh boy, see if we can pop a two liter with it. Yeah. See if I can pop a buffalo over there. I thought I hit him, but. There we go. Mr. Gong, another shot. Boom. How about Mr. Cowboy? That thing lays them in there. That one's a tough to beat, isn't it? That's tough to beat. Now this one's got a three inch barrel. It's got that same powerful ammo in it. I should not be able to shoot this one very well because of the, the size. You know, it's just not as big. And, uh, you know, the barrel length. You know, when you get more that much more sight radius, you just can, you know, typically shoot them a little better. But I don't know. Let's see how I can do with it. All right. Oh, I don't know. What have I not shot? How about one of those? <laughs> a reminder of the power of a 357. How about the cowboy? Boom. How about the gong? Popping. How about that ram? Killed that ram. <laughs> How about a bowling pin? Boom. Do I have any more? <sighs> I got one. How about another bowling pin? Double action, single action. Whew. Still reliable and still accurate and pretty easy to shoot well. So it comes down to these two. Which one is more practical? more useful what do you all think what do you all think come on now what do you think i should go with this old fbi uh version and again we won't let any uh, of our opinions about recent <laughs> developments in any federal agencies uh shade or affect our opinion here okay uh but this has been uh, considered a a high quality and, and good enough uh, handgun to be carried by uh, people who carry a gun for a living is leave it at that as this one has as well and i guess about everything on the table so any meeny miny mo gosh 357 so if i just got one and of these two and if i can shoot both of them pretty much equally well i think think I'm just gonna have to go with the smaller one yeah I mean really because the truck is on the way it's almost here and I've got to give 
when I'm up, so I'm going to give up, I think, the bigger one. All right? Am I crazy? And, of course, plus this one has a little sentimental value. Some guy named John bought it for me. But I try not to let that be the big factor. So that's it. I'm going to honor it by shooting it six more times. All right? I'm going to take out that two liter. Now watch me miss, not be able to hit it, and have to uh, change my mind. What did I tell you? <laughs> I put pressure on myself. <laughs> Pretty funny, huh? Where am I going? I can't see it. Let me shoot at that uh, uh, tombstone. Okay, I think I was pulling left, just a hair left. Let me load it again. <laughs> I'm going to put the hot stuff in again. Yeah, that's all me. That's not the, not the gun. But if I can't hit it, maybe I have to change my mind. Really? Yeah, this stuff's pretty stout. All right, let's get a good trigger break. No pressure. There we go. Just got to get a sight picture, right? Mr. Cowboy. stuff is stout. All right. Since you're the winner, you get to shoot the watermelon, Model 13. <laughs> we'll end on the watermelon. <laughs> so anyway, you know, I really didn't want to choose, but I had to. And I know I've taken uh, a lot of your afternoon or your night to make this decision. So a firearm that, uh, that that you can shoot pretty well. Again, that's why the federal agencies chose it. Uh, a three inch barrel that really acts like a four inch barrel in terms of the weight and everything and plenty of sight radius and uh, snag free, very snag free, okay? And uh, just feels great. The K frame is hard to beat. So if I just can have one, I guess that's my 357. All right, but to tell you the truth, I don't want to give any of them up, and I'm not going to let that truck pull into the driveway to pick them up. No, no way. Life is good. Oh, fire. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall, talongungrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips, so go check them out. Also, Ballastol, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So, Ballastol, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45, and also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.